Hi guys, Adam here. The most unique and versatile camera in the world is already two years old and to celebrate this special occasion, we finally got the 8K version. So, was it really worth waiting so long for this camera and do I still believe that this is the best camera on the market in this price range that you can get? Let's check it out. In fact, when it comes to the technical details, the build and the different options for using this great camera, then I could safely duplicate 90% of my old review about the 6K version and the 4D Flex because technically this is exactly the same camera only with a new sensor. Ronin 4D is a kind of modular camera and this means that the main body and all accessories are exactly the same as in the 6K version and the change is only the head and brain that is the gimbal module where you will find a new 8K sensor. Thanks to this, you can also buy the new 8K module separately, so if you already have a Ronin 4D 6K, then for only 3600 you can upgrade your camera to the 8K version. And if you want to buy the wall kit, then you need almost $13,000. Now, this is not a cheap camera and as you can see quite a bit more expensive than the 6K version, but I would like to show you that the difference between these sensors is not just numbers. Here exactly like the 6K version you will find the same fantastic stabilization, different lens mount, built-in ND filters and autofocus with almost any type of lens, and I mean really any type of lens, but about that in a moment. You might think that there is not a big difference between 6 and 8K, but keep in mind that this is a resolution 4 times higher than 4K and 33% better than 6K. It's hard to see the difference on a smartphone screen, but on a large monitor and in professional post-production, the difference is quite huge. Another major change is the built-in low-pass filter and some very important differences in shooting slow-mo, but what is a very important upgrade in my opinion is the new dynamic range expansion mode which combined with the improved DJI Cinema Color gives you cinematic quality right out of the box. Why is this so important in my opinion? Because as you know, today even small cameras and even smartphones can shoot 8K and 120 frames per second, but not all of these cameras have almost 15 stops of dynamic range, dual ISO, 14 bits of color depth, and very importantly, not all of them can record raw footage internally. Now, when I started working on this episode, I thought I would like to focus more on the visual side of this new sensor, because that is the only thing that has changed, and besides, I think I covered all the technical points in my review of the 6K version, but I also thought that in addition to my favorite full frame lens that I usually use in this setup, I would like to use some special lenses that will even more emphasize the cinematic soul of this camera. And besides, I wanted this lens to be as big as possible to prove to you that with this camera the limitations are almost gone and on top of that I also wanted to show you that the Ronin 4D no matter if the 6 or 8K version is not only a fantastic gimbal but a real cinema camera in every aspect. Now, to use such large and heavy lenses you need only two things, 4D flex and a dedicated cage from Tilta. 
Now, the main idea of this combination is to completely lock the gimbal and sensor, so you basically get a pure handheld camera exactly like the Sony Venice expansion system style. There are many reasons for such use, but the most important ones are weight distribution of dual camera, the option of using it in a wide range of special situations, and the possibility of using this camera with extremely large lenses in the most professional way and even on different kinds of support systems. But at this point I also thought that it would be really great if I could use the LiDAR sensor with autofocus with such a huge and fantastic lens and work with such a setup as a one-man band. But in order to do that, I need two small modifications. The first change is new place for the focus mirror. We need to do this because the original focus mirror mounting points are already used by the tilta cage. The solution to this problem is quite easy and all you need is a regular rod holder on which you need to mount the focus motor. What's more, such a solution has a second benefit because now you can change the position of the motor depending on the position of the focus ring on the lens and even on such an extremely long lens there is absolutely no problem. Now, the second modification is to change the location of the ladder sensor because in the original position it is completely blocked by the lens. Unfortunately, DJI or any other company doesn't make any kind of longer replacement and it's not a regular USB-C or Thunderbolt cable because it has a kind of custom construction. Here I will not go into details because this is a topic for another long episode, but I spent a really long time looking for the best solution to this problem, including very precise work. But probably the easiest solution is two USB-C adapters and two additional original cables from DJI. Now, you are probably wondering why we need two adapters and not one. Well, it's a bit complicated because these cables have a pretty unique design and by using one adapter, you're basically changing the orientation of all the wires inside. So you have to change that orientation once again, which is why you need another adapter and that's it. Everything works great and now you can use the full potential of this device, which is a really unique experience. You know, such a lens like DZO Tango Zoom or Laowa Proteus with smart out of focus is really something incredible and I think that such a set is a real dream of every solo shooters. In fact, all this stuff combined together is not light, so any support system will work great, but for me a Steadicam and Easy Rig works best here. As I mentioned it at the beginning, one of the most important improvements for me is next to the higher sensor resolution, better dynamic range, which is almost 15 stops, and in combination with dual ISO, the Ronin 8K is from now on one of the best cameras in a low light situation. What's more, in expansion mode, you also have not 12 but 14 bits of color depth, which gives more than 4 billion colors. That's massive color space that combined with the various codecs allows you to make extremely precise color grading. Now, there is of course a limitation, which is that the dynamic range expansion mode can only be active in full frame sensor size and in regular frame rate up to 30 frames per second. This means that you can't use the full potential of this feature when you are shooting slow-mo and in super 35 sensor mode. On the other hand, there is one interesting thing I found. The lenses I'm using here are designed for Super 35 sensor coverage, but in full frame 8K mode there is so much of that resolution that all I need to do is zoom in slightly in editing so I can record in dynamic range expansion mode but with Super 35 lenses. And in my opinion, this combination is much better than shooting in Super 35 sensor size because I have more dynamic range and of course dual ISO. But talking about sensor size, in this mode, the sensor resolution is limited to 5.5K and this is a significant improvement over the old 6K version where the resolution is this mode was only 4K. But to be honest, no matter what sensor size and resolution you choose, ProRes RAW combined with the improved DJI Cinema Color Science and such fantastic lenses is a pure magic.
When it comes to Codex, here we have a bit less choice than the 6K version, but here I would like to quickly tell you why it is worth getting a ProRes ROL license. The bad news is that even despite very close cooperation between Blackmagic Design and Apple, DaVinci Resolve still does not support ProRes ROL. So if you work in Resolve, you still have to convert these files in different ways. But here is also good news. In Assimilate Studio, you can finally convert ProRes RAW footage from RAW in 4D to Cinema DNG and in this way, you finally have access to RAW settings in DaVinci Resolve. You know, color grading these RAW files is a real pleasure and you will be really surprised about how much information they have and how flexible these files are. Exactly like two years ago, in the next few weeks, I will try to make one longer video for you guys, in which I would like to compare the Ronin 48K and the Red Komodo X, which are two of the best cameras I have. But at this point, from the first test I've done, it's clear that both of these cameras produce really amazing cinematic and fantastic image. And it's really hard to say which of these cameras is better choice. From one side a bit more dynamic range, 16 bits of color depth and of course global shutter, but less resolution, smaller sensor and still only the body itself without any accessories. On the other hand, 8K full frame sensor, almost 15 stops of dynamic range, dual ISO, 14 bits color, much improved rolling shutter, but most importantly, here you have all-in-one camera system. Basically, all you have to do is put the lens in and then you can just go shoot a big movie and take any kind of shot you can think of. You need a shot with crazy stabilization or maybe you want some static shots in a tricky position, need some kind of special shots or a camera for epic car shots, or maybe you need a pure handheld camera with crazy big lens and all this in 8K. What's more, all you have to do is put it all on a Steadicam and you get an extremely professional camera kit with a smart autofocus and built-in wireless video. You won't find anything that good at this price range. So here I still have the same opinion. I never stopped loving this camera even for a moment and now when I got a new sensor, I feel like I fell in love all over again. So yeah, this camera is a perfect solution and an excellent choice for one-man band, for small teams and even for big budget productions. You know, the incredible performance and quality to price ratio, the compact size and the versatility of this equipment is something that is hard to even describe. So at this point I have great advice for you. If you are not familiar with this camera, you don't have to buy it right away, rent it for a few days, check it out, play with it and I guarantee you that if you learn to work with this amazing equipment, you will never want to use any other camera again.